everyone and welcome back or welcome to my channel. I am really excited and really nervous today because I am going to be sharing a short story that I wrote and the illustration that I drew to accompany this short story. The short story is called The Icicle. This is to grow my portfolio because I am working on my own novel right now and it's going to be a novel of words and pictures and illustrations and I'm really excited about that but I can't share that with you yet until it's completed and it's going through a lot of different stages and figuring a bunch of different things out. But I do want to grow my portfolio so that I have work that I can show different people, my ability to write and my ability to create different narrative images. And I thought it would be exciting to share that with you guys. My portfolio and website, the link is in the description. It's always in the description if you ever want to check out the work that I have up there. I'm petrified to be completely honest because sharing my writing has always been easy when it's in a school setting because I went to school for illustration and writing and so I took a bunch of different creative writing fiction classes and nonfiction as well but it's always been really easy for me to share my writing in that environment but it's very different to share it with anyone, with the world really, whoever comes across this video or looks at my website because I will be posting the short story and the illustration on my website if you guys want to check it out there and read it yourself. I will be narrating it uh, while I draw so you guys can watch me create the illustration and you can listen to the story as I draw. I thought that that would be nice. I also did that with my creating a book cover for Alice in Wonderland where I painted painted the red rabbit, if you guys remember that. Um, I'm really excited to share more of my artwork on here and my writing, which being a writer takes such courage because not everyone is going to like what you write and it's very vulnerable, but anyway, I had this idea of this icicle story in the winter time when it was snowing. This image came to me and I had this, this idea so I thought I wanted to create it and make it part of my portfolio, so anyway. I'm really excited for you guys to hear my story and to read it if you go on my portfolio website and to see the illustration. So yeah, I hope, hope, hope you enjoy and I hope to create more of these kinds of videos where I just show you me growing my portfolio in the future. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being so kind as always and yeah, so here is the icicle written and illustrated by yours truly. <laughs> the Icicle, written and illustrated by Carolyn Marie Castagna. I was only a few drops of icy water when I first fell and landed on the edge of their roof. As the crisp days went by, the longer I grew, until I was long enough to see into a dimly lit room. The only light shining in was eight rectangles of sun separated by the window's grill. Facing me were two reading chairs. One was big and the color of leaves in autumn. The other was smaller and the color of leaves in spring. Between the two was a short round table, and on it were two cups of tea and a stack of three leather-bound books. I noticed the floral china cup, which was closer to the small green chair, had an old lipstick stain on its rim. Although I was a distance away, it looked as if there was a thin layer of dust where it sat on the table. The ivory mug next to it was double the size, with a few yellow stripes painted around it. The mug was half full, but there were no warm vapors rising from it, which usually accompany cups of tea. It must have been left there, forgotten by its drinker. Everything else in the room was drawn in a sheet of darkness. The room stayed this way for two whole nights, until the third sunrise came. My icy tip was at its longest by this time. I had begun to feel lonely when suddenly I heard the sound of tires on the road. A grey-haired man stepped out of a shiny black car, and with hunched shoulders he walked into the dark house by himself. At that moment I wondered if he was lonely too. I lost sight of him then, until the light in the room switched on and lit up the two reading chairs. Slowly, he walked to the smaller chair. His heavy footsteps made the wooden floorboards creak, and it sounded like they were crying. He put a gentle hand on the small green chair 
and wept like the creaking floor. Watery tears were gleaming on his face, resembling the icy droplets that made me. He leaned over, took the small cup with the lipstick stain in his hand, and held it to his chest. There was a small circle of dust left behind on the table. He angrily wiped the dust away as if its existence was hurtful. I always teased her about dusting every morning, he said to the emptiness. You see, this is why you shouldn't have left. Who am I going to tease now? A smile spread across his face, and I wondered how humans could do that. How did they smile while crying? Then we both heard the front door bang shut. He quickly wiped at his eyes and put the cup back where it had been. A series of quick footsteps were heard coming from the nearby hall. In a fit of giggles, a little red-haired girl ran into the room. She raced around the chairs and wrapped her little arms around the thin legs of the gray-haired man. He smiled down at her, lifting her up and into his arms. She nestled her curly head into his neck. At that moment, I wondered what it must feel like to be held in a warm embrace. I wished that one day I would find out. The sun and their love made me weep, leaving me slightly thinner and shorter than before. I looked down to see how much time I had until there was nothing left of me at all. When I returned my gaze to the room, I was shocked to find the gray-haired man looking directly at me. He tapped the little girl's shoulder and whispered, Do you know what your granny and I used to do each winter? She shook her red ringlets in reply. We used to collect icicles. Don't they melt, Grandad? the little girl asked. Not if you keep them in an ice chest, he grinned. She tilted her head in confusion. Why did you and Granny do that? He was quiet for a few seconds, then replied, I don't remember why exactly. I just remembered it was something she always loved doing, so naturally I loved doing it too. Why, she asked again. Because I loved your Granny. I loved her too. I know, sweetheart. She nestled her head back into the crook of his neck. Then a second later, she turned and looked at me. Can we still collect icicles for Granny? Of course we can, sweetheart. I think she'd like that very much. I knew they were speaking of Granny, but for some reason I felt as if I were the she they were referring to. The one that would like that to be collected very much. Humans seem to collect many things. Books, teacups, reading chairs... The one that puzzles me is why they collect other humans. Before I could finish this thought, I felt a little hand hold me tight. It was the warm embrace I had wished for, and I was happy to no longer be alone. I left a trail of rainy tears as they carried me into their home, for it was then that I realized why humans collect other humans. Love. It was all for love. All right, so that is the icicle. I hope you liked seeing me draw the illustration and the different stages that it goes through. It is graphite on Bristol paper, if you're wondering. Nice, sturdy, thick paper. And I did use the Staedtler, the Mars Techna pencils, which are fantastic. I hope you enjoyed hearing my first short stories. I've written so many short stories and so many things. My writing portfolio is huge, but I've never really shared it, so. Yes, I hope you liked my first shared short story, and I look forward to sharing more stories and illustrations and artwork with you guys in the future. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you for always being so kind and wonderful, and I will see you soon in another video. Happy reading and happy creating.